So I know people will be signing on for the next minute or two, but uh, we want to get started, not to waste anybody's time. But thank you for joining us for season three, episode number three of the Global Radio Ideas webinar. <clears throat> My name is Ken Benson from the P1 Media Group, and our company does research, consulting strategies for stations around the world. And joining us from Stuttgart, Germany, the home of Mercedes-Benz and Benztown, the global leader in imaging and production, a guy with a bigger title than mine, Mr. <laughs> CEO Andy Sandman oh, in the house. Come on, Ken. Come on. <laughs> Thanks, guys. How do, you, Thanks, how, do you, Ken. how do you fit that on a business card, you know? I don't um, know. Like, I'll just pick one when we started the company. You know, Chachi wanted to be president. I said, okay, if you're the president, I'm going to be the CEO. It was the only title I knew back then in English. So, <laughs> so right. thanks for joining us. Uh, today's webinar, Coaching Talent from Good to Great. We have, like, a fabulous guest. The chat box is activated. Let us know where you're watching in the world. And if you have a question, post it. We'll be taking all of your questions later in the show. I know I always promise. Let's see if we can keep it. All right, so a little bit about today's guest. He began his career as a radio DJ in college and became fascinated with top 40 morning legends Rick Dees and Scott Shannon, certainly some good mentors. Uh, he was having so much fun on the air. His parents kept asking him when he was going to get serious about his career path and, and maybe get a real job. I've certainly heard that from my parents. And after 10 years of claiming to have too much fun on the air, he got a bit more serious and maybe wore a tie back in the day. I know I did some days, became a program director. And he's programmed many stations, including the legendary WMC in Memphis, and is also credited with creating and programming the first major market modern AC formatted station. Some of you may have heard of it, Star 98.7 in Los Angeles. He's also been a GM and has collected numerous awards, including Billboard's Consultant of the Year for AC and Top 40 and was named Consultant of the Year at the World Wide Radio Summit a few years back, which is now known today as the All Access Audio Summit. So a shout out to Joel Denver. That's coming up in about a, a month and a half, I think. So uh, mm -hmm. good session and, and good seminar coming up. So since launching his company back in 96, he had a mission of creating brand depth for radio stations by developing morning shows that generate ratings and revenue. And he's worked with a few talent um, and shows in multiple countries, including a couple you may have heard of. Uh, that guy in the picture, he looks like a TV guy, but actually started as a radio guy, uh, Jimmy Kimmel. Another guy that's also on TV now, too, in movies, uh, Ryan Seacrest. Mm -hmm. uh, the late, great Kid Craddock. The Burt Show out of Atlanta, which is on, I don't know, what, 80 markets maybe now mm -hmm. in, in the U.S. Uh, Toucher and Rich, Dave Ryan at KDWB in Minneapolis and many, many more. And joining us today from lovely Southern California, please welcome the talent coach extraordinaire, Randy Lane. Thank you. Mm. Randy, My pleasure. so good to have you. Yeah, I'm out of breath after that introduction. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I've been around a long time, kid. <laughs> yeah, maybe can maybe Randy can help you and you and I to get some better uh, some get better presenters. I mean, I'm not sure if we can keep up with Jimmy and Ryan, but. Maybe with uh, the Bircho Touch or Rich, let's see. So, Randy, um, it's a pleasure to have you. Fantastic. Thanks for being here. And before we jump in, uh, coaching talent shows from good to great, let's begin by telling us something, and that's my favorite part, favorite question, something people may not, may not know about you, something unexpected. Okay. Well, they may not know that I'm an avid environmentalist. And to me, long term, that's probably the most uh, important issue that we have today. And I've been a member of the uh, Sierra Club, active in organizations oh. like Save the Redwoods uh, for a long time and just involved uh, with, uh, you know, cleaning up trails, repairing trails and making donations, that sort of thing. And as you can see, I'm an, uh, also an enthusiastic hiker. Love hiking. I hike multiple times a week uh, here in Southern California, and, and I've had the privilege to be able to hike in Germany and Italy and the UK as well. Fantastic. Yeah, it's a beautiful picture. And so you're not only saving the forest, you're actually saving radio shows. And yes. that's what we're going to talk about today. <laughs> I have so, a dual mission. <laughs> so, Randy, I know as we, we chatted preparing for today's webinar, um, you and I both agree with this. Um, that not a lot of coaching occurs for radio talent. 
And, and I think there's maybe a couple of reasons. One is program directors are rarely ever trained on how to do it. So there's just general lack of, you know, I don't know if it's a fear or something. And it's an uncomfortable thing to really sit down with your key talent and tell them things they need to improve and things they're not doing well. Um, but regardless, I mean, talent is radio's key differentiator uh, and our competitive advantage against the streaming wars. So I want to ask you, you know, why is it important and, and how can we improve as an industry uh, taking our, our greatest asset and making them better? Well, first, it's important. I believe that the future of radio is talent. And we've seen studies here recently that the number one reason that people tune in, even the music stations, is for their favorite personalities. And so it is very important. And I agree uh, with you, Ken, that talent is the great distinguisher. And I think the reason that, uh, that we don't have great coaching in the industry right now is for the last uh, couple of decades, uh, most programmers have been focused on on music, on programming, marketing, research, and that sort of thing, but not uh, not really trained in being able to to sit down, have a relationship, uh, and coach talent. And the other thing that's happened, uh, and this probably started back uh, when the recession happened around 2009. There's been a lot of downsizing in radio, particularly uh, in in the U.S. and and now we're finding ourselves in a situation where programmers are wearing many hats. They're programming multiple radio stations in a, in a, in a cluster, have multiple jobs. And so there just isn't the time. And as you said, not the expertise to coach talent. So if I were a PD today and, and really didn't have any formal training in coaching talent, are there a couple things that you would tell me that helped me start that process and well, one, one very easy thing is to actually sit down and listen. Listen to breakfast shows, listen to morning shows, spend the time there, have a relationship with talent, discuss their shows and everything, and also uh, watch other forms of media. Uh, watch television, uh, listen to podcasts and those sort of things. And not, uh, you know, you can listen for enjoyment, but also be noticing what they're doing, how they're structuring things, you know, what that process is. And I think the more that you are aware of the creative process itself, you're going to be better at coaching talent as well. Yeah. And I mean, our webinar today is obviously called Coaching Talent from Good to Great. So, I mean, is there a specific process, Randy, that are using, like, basically, I think, I mean, we heard so many great names. So how do you take a, a young, let's say, Ryan Seacrest and make him a superstar? Obviously, talent need to be involved, but, like, is there a process to, um, to, to what you do? There is. And in 1995, 20-year-old Ryan Seacrest walked into my office at KYSR in Los Angeles he had been doing radio, a little bit of television in Atlanta, and he wanted to work part time. He wanted to do overnights. And so he came in. And I said, OK, Ryan, you've been uh, you've been involved a little bit in, in radio and in television. Which one do you want to pursue? He paused and he said, <laughs> I want to be a star in radio. I want to be a star in television. And my goal is to be the next Dick Clark. Worked so out I, pretty well for him. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and at the time, I think, oh, good for you. You know, he's, good. he's 20 years old. He's got great goals and everything. But, you know, uh, the thing I think that we can all take away from that uh, is the importance and the values of having a clear vision and having a goal for what you want to accomplish in life. And, uh, you, you know, as far as the as the process goes, we take a collaborative approach in coaching talent. Uh, we believe uh, that the essence of coaching is to unlock a talent's creative potential. And we take uh, what is called a uh, Socratic approach to coaching. And it really involves uh, getting to the essence of asking the right questions, the art of asking questions. Rather than uh, coming in and sitting down with talent and, say, and dictating, do this, do this, uh, and that sort of thing, we start by asking questions, and we really believe that asking the right questions gives talent ownership of their growth. 
The other thing that we look at in the coaching process too is to focus on strengths. Identify what a talent and a show's strengths are and expand in those areas. For example, if they're really good at interacting with callers, create more situations where that you uh, interact with uh, people on the phone, through social media and everything. Conversely, uh, for example, we have a client uh, that one of the players on the show is not a great storyteller, struggles with storytelling. And so we minimize the amount of stories that that, that, that talent uh, is going to tell on the air and go to some of the other uh, people on the team who are better storytellers. So those are really the, the two basic principles that we use. And as a programmer, coaching talent, the first thing that you want to do is to have a relationship. Establish a relationship, and ideally that relationship would be uh, based on trust, uh, on honesty, and on safety. And by safety, I mean that means that allowing that talent to, cry, to try creative uh, ideas, mm. and sometimes they're going to fail. You know, that's part of the creative process. And so allowing them to try new things, if it doesn't work out, not to be yelled at, uh, you know, not, not to be reprimanded in any way. So being an advocate and a supporter, making sure the talent knows that you're on their side and, or, you know, you're on their team and you're part of that team. And we could also talk about a sample. Uh, we'll go over the highlights of a sample coaching session that we found to be very effective. And this will go back to the, the collaborative approach uh, that I talked about. So let's say you're going to sit down and have a session. Listen to three or four, five segments of a show together. Play segment one. And then after that segment, stop that allow the talent to evaluate that first. Okay, so what do you think worked well there? What were the positives? Talk about that for a little bit, and then you can also chime in with your thoughts on that, uh, and then go to the other side. Well, in, in hindsight, what could have made that segment better? Then we'll talk about that a little bit, and then any points that the talent doesn't bring up about that particular segment, you as a programmer can also bring up additional points and just be sure that you deliver those points in a very matter-of-fact, non-personal way. And then in, in, in that type of process, then the show, the talent has ownership of their growth because it's not all you, you, know, you talking all the time. So coming out of their mouth, they're much more likely to incorporate that in, into their performance as well. Um, so at the end of the session, when you've gone through that, Agree on what the action steps are. Okay, here's what we're going to work on, you know, for the next week, for example. And then have talent follow up with a bullet point review of the action points. And the, and the reason that we do that, that we found that if the, uh, if, the, if the email, the memo comes from talent themselves, they're much more likely to incorporate and work on those action points rather than coming from the programmer. That's really smart. I, just a little uh, follow up on the questions. First part, like what type of questions do you ask? If, just give me an example. If you say asking the right questions, like what type of questions do you ask? Well, for example, you could say, um, well, how, how did you think the setup worked there? You know, uh, it, did you get into it the way that you that you feel engaged the audience uh, in the first eight or nine seconds? We know that we're dealing with a very short attention span today. Uh, so there'll be questions like that. If it's uh, interacting with a caller, you know, did uh, were you actively listening to the caller? Did you follow up on some of the uh, responses that they had to say? Great. We're chatting with Randy Lane. If you have a question for Randy, please put it in the chat box. We'll take your questions a little bit later in the show. So Randy, now it's, it's 2022. And the question I have is what should shows, what should announcers talk about? And what I mean by this, and to clarify, we live in this fragmented, really segmented world that's changed even dramatically over the last 10 years. Uh, you think about the recent Winter Olympics that just happened or mm -hmm. any of the award shows for the last couple of years have their worst ratings ever. And even the most popular television shows are maybe being watched by a third of the people compared to 10 years ago. So this 
these mass things, these mass events, these unifiers that used to provide a lot of the content for shows, in my opinion, aren't really that relevant anymore. And, and you think even the last two years besides COVID and now maybe the Ukraine war, which aren't the most fun topics to talk about on an entertainment based radio station. Uh, what do you tell these guys to talk about? Well, you make a really good point, too, about the fragmentation. For example, 10 years ago, American Idol in the U.S. was would draw about 35 million viewers is the number one show of the week. Today, the number one show, you're lucky to get 10 or 12 million viewers because of all the fragmentation. Even the Super Bowl, which everybody here assumes that everybody watches the Super Bowl. Well, about 115 million people watch it out of 330 million people. So you, you can see what smaller percentage of the audience actually sees a television show that I mean, you might be talking about. So what we suggest to talent is that if you're going to talk about a television show to with one or two sentences, give the premise of that show and add a clip of audio to that. And that is going to make it much more inclusive. A lot more people will be into the conversation that you're talking about. And the other thing, we have to be much more selective on especially pop culture stories that you talk about today. And I hope you're not hearing that annoying leaf blower outside my window. <laughs> I thought it was a cow mooing, but OK. <laughs> uh, we're getting closer and closer. But so um, so the point is that rather than uh, than go to announcement type stories in the entertainment uh, world like okay, uh, a, a group has a, new, has a new album coming out or there's a tour, a new movie is coming out in a couple of months, whatever that is. Focus on stories where there's action, where there's drama, where there's something happened. And when you can, always include audio to that story. Now, so that's why you can talk about entertainment, pop culture stories. In addition to that, Local content has been growing in popularity over the last three or four years. It still has to be relevant and people have to care about that content. But when there are relevant local stories, you want to go there. Uh, also, storytelling. You know, look at the stories that are trending that are relevant to your audience. Uh, other, uh, other areas of content that we suggest that shows focus on. There are features, for example, good news stories have become very popular in view of all the negativity that's going on in the world. So features like that can certainly work. And uh, the number one thing uh, that listeners are tuning in for today, humor and fun. So anything that you can do to make the show more fun that you can include, uh, whether the, those are bits or uh, you know, comedy uh, situations you can get into, those are the type of things that we recommend that people talk about. It's basically storytelling, too. And a lot of those can come from the cast uh, on a show with personal stories, as long as those personal stories are relevant to the audience. But humor and fun, those are the main draws. Those are the big draw. You know, humor and fun has always been a, a big attribute for breakfast shows, morning shows around the world. But in the last few years, uh, with all of the negativity that's going on, and now we got a war going on, uh, it's an escape that people go on music stations, and they do want to be humored, and they want to they want to have fun and participate in that fun. Right. So let me let me go in a slightly different direction. Um, okay. Besides radio being a place we could talk about all kinds of things that happened on television the night before, maybe not so much now unless we, we kind of package it the way you suggest. But radio was also the place people used to tune to for breaking news, weather, traffic. I remember as a kid in New York waiting forever to hear the school closings on a snowy day. Uh, and, and sadly, that's not what people come to radio for anymore. So what, if anything, is that must tune in we can still offer today? Well, uh, I'll go back to something we touched on in the beginning here that the number one reason that people are tuning in are to hear their favorite personalities. So if your radio station has not developed uh, what we call uh, HD characters or personality brands, trusted voices, 
that is exactly what should be a priority for your radio station. They're going to tune in to hear those personalities, what they have to say about lifestyle things that are going on in the culture. Uh, it, they, can be they can be tuning in for local content, especially if there's a weather situation. Uh, if there's a big storm, uh, for example, we do uh, highly recommend that, that talent make that the big story of the day because it is affecting everyone. Traffic is something, for example, that we get on our phones now with the Google Maps or Waze or, or whatever. However, if there is a massive traffic situation, then that's still something that people want, do want to tune in to radio for. And they want to tune in for those other things uh, that I talked about, too, to be entertained, to, uh, to laugh and to feel good. So, so Randy, we talk a lot about talent and shows on a radio station, and we mostly speak of mornings. Uh, we have seen some stations over the past year beginning to experiment with multi-person afternoon shows. For example, Z100 in New York, Q99 in Atlanta, a couple of Canadian stations. Uh, is this the future? Uh, is this experiment going to work? Uh, is it something you encourage and you're hearing more about? Or is it something that, uh, you know, just a couple stations are going to do it and everyone else is going to forget about it because it costs money? I absolutely encourage it. You know, in a lot of markets today, the cum in afternoons is higher than it is in the morning. And I think it's a great opportunity. And uh, well, in fact, Ryan Seacrest started out in the afternoon on Star 98.7 here. And that same station today uh, has an afternoon personality benchmark as well. So, you know, it's a, the usage is a little bit different. Uh, just because of the time of the day and people that, ha that are working have gone through most of their work day and everything. And so we believe you do have to play more music in the afternoon. However, playing less music than you're playing middays that allows time for, for personality, for content in the afternoon. I believe that afternoons is, is a great opportunity of the future. And, uh, we have several clients that have both a morning and afternoon personality benchmark. Yeah, so that might be a solution. Good personality is always difficult to develop and to find, um, especially these days with all the options that especially younger demos can can find and find themselves. So touching on this instant gratification world, where everything you want to know is basically at your fingertips a millisecond away. So is teasing something you feel that is still important? Like even the time slots and the time frames get smaller and smaller? I believe it is. I believe it's still important. And, and I do understand the school of thought that people want to, you know, they want it instantly. However, when you are not teasing content, What's missing in, in, in a show or a radio station like that is a lack of drama of what's going to happen next. I mean, there's a reason uh, that film companies put out trailers for movies highlighting the best part of that movie. And if you're watching a, a Netflix series, if you're watching a, a movie anywhere, they're continually setting you up for what's going to happen next. There is a uh, there was a professor at Carnegie Mellon University in Pittsburgh who did a study on the human brain back in the 1990s. And he came up with what he called the information gap of curiosity. And this is not a huge revelation, but but what he came up with is that the human brain is wired to when a mystery is set up and you don't know what happened, you feel compelled to fill that gap of information. And so we really work with talent on crafting teases. They're going to set up a mystery that they're going to resolve in the next five minutes or the next 10 minutes, for example. And so it's just a fact that your radio station is going to have better time spent listening. There's, uh, there's going to be this feeling of what am I going to miss if I'm not listening, if I'm not tuning into this radio show? You know, storylines, for example, of something that's going on. Maybe uh, a cast member is uh, about to uh, get married, or, you know, taking them through that process of finding out what's going on with that storyline right now. So 
Yes, I, I still believe very much uh, in teasing. It highlights the content. And it also highlights the characters on, on the show as well. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. I think a lot of stations I listen to say lack that journey. They're, they're just living in the moment and not taking listeners on a story arc that goes throughout the show or throughout the day or the week or a month even. If you're planning a wedding, could be even longer. Uh, and, and I think that's really important. It also brings people back. It really does. It, uh, it keeps... Well, uh, like vertical teasing within your show can prevent somebody from tuning out, especially when you're going into a commercial stop set. I mean, the two highest tune out points on a radio station that plays music is when the music stops, when you're coming out of music and the talent starts talking. And that's why that we recommend there that they start with a headline tease of what they're about to do as opposed to the traditional preamble of name of the radio station, name of the show, a slogan, a weather, the time. By the time you get all that stuff out there, 10 seconds has gone by, and the non-P1s, the non-favorite uh, uh, people that that's their favorite uh, show, they're gone. And so starting with the T's, and then the second highest tune-out point is when you stop talking going into commercials. And so being able to hook listeners to go and stay through that commercial stops that are even music coming after that, teasing a second time is what we recommend as well. Right. So pretty much all that play-by-play, -play, which is what I call all that stuff. The yeah. back sell, the time, the station call letters, slogans, et cetera, and, and just get right into the meat. Yeah, and we we uh, understand that in in diary markets that's still important. However, if you get the headline out there first, we're going to get to that in a second. Then have all of that stuff. And another way of doing it is just have the name of the radio station and the show with a produced rejoiner that's very short. You know, three seconds is all you need, something like that. And then the talent can come on, hit the ground running with a headline and directly into the content. And I think you have a much better chance of holding people and maintaining and increasing your time spent listening. As long as the content is good, though, right? Because, I mean, that's, that's right. like the major issue here, right? That, like, a lot of people tease. But if I listen to the teasing, that's why I'm maybe not as a fan as you guys. Because most of the teasing I'm listening to is kind of like, there is nothing mysterious. It's just lame basically telling me what three songs they're going to play in the next 20 minutes. And, like... You know what I mean? I think it needs to be, there needs to be really meat if you do the tease. That's what I, what I feel about. Just the pure teasing is not going to hold people like listen to the station somehow, you know, like you need to have the right content for the right person and tease it in a way, like you said it, like to make it mysterious and like people wanting to know what's going on. No, I agree with you. If, if your content is not there, you can do everything right with, with PPM, with all the mechanics, the structure, the cheesing, and it will not make any difference. You so gotta we're, chatting, yeah, we're chatting with Randy Lane. He's telling us how to take a show or a talent from good to great. Uh, so, Randy, how does research or, or does research factor into this equation at all? It does factor in. Uh, there's, there's a couple of ways it does with, with qualitative and quantitative in, uh uh, research, for example, with uh, with quantitative in, uh, research, you can find out the popularity, you can find out the familiarity uh, of talent and of shows, and so I, I think that is important on the uh, on the qualitative side with focus groups or listener panels. You can go a little bit more in depth to some of the content uh, that they're doing and and hear what uh, what listeners are actually saying about that content and the other thing even with the with the ratings the ratings are important too which is a form of research because the value of a show really depends on it, are they underperforming even or outperforming the performance of the whole radio station and uh in shows that outperform the radio station let's say 10 to 20 percent are typically shows that are going to have great value to that station. It's going to increase their value and, uh, and their contract is going to get renewed and they're going to, they're going to make more money too. So, you know, 
Yeah, research. I, I think there's still a place for research uh, regarding talent development. Also, like, obviously, and that's then going to be my question, obviously, spending a lot of time in the studio creating audio, um, whether it's jingle packages, imaging, ads, promos. There is, and obviously for me as, a, as an imaging guy, I feel it's super important to create those things and position the talent. But how important it is in your mind, like, to, to do that for, like, a really successful show? It. Um, I'm a believer in audio and production. Now, from Andy, from what you're talking about, staging features, staging benchmarks, having music beds that will match the tone uh, and the content uh, of what a talent is doing, I think is really important. And you can also, uh, you can use production uh, to highlight the, the imaging of a show, for example. Anything that breaks the pattern, we call them pattern disruptors, because the attention span of the audience is, is so short. But when you bring in a music bed, when you bring in a sound effect, uh, audio, whether it could be a sound bite, whatever that is, jingles, all of those things that break the pattern and sound different from the dialogue or monologue that's going on, they're going to serve to re-engage the audience. And it's also going to give your show more dynamics and more sizzle as well. So yes, I, I, uh, I think that, that production and audio are still very important to a show. Yeah, and I agree with your point. I remember seeing Randy Williams speak uh, years ago, The Wizard of Ads, and he writes about this in one of his books about surprising Broca, which is a part of the brain, right, that likes patterns. Yeah. And, and by disrupting those, it, people are more likely to hear what you say. So. Uh, that's why I get so frustrated sometimes with it seems like every morning show runs the same promo. Here's what you missed. <laughs> like, yeah, and most of the time it's, it's nothing worth replaying anyway, but it's just that same pattern and you hear those same pre-produced intros and you just don't hear it anymore. It just goes right over your head. Yeah. Um, you know, you bring so up a good point on imaging too. Uh, I'm not a big fan of here's what you missed on the show because you're locking yourself into having to come up with something from that particular show and there's not always something exactly. you can capture in a few yeah. seconds and so it's better just to you know say the name of the show that you're talking about than a clip now i, I do believe that having clips from a show mm -hmm. is the best way to image and to get more people to want to try that show because you're demonstrating what an entertaining show that is rather than telling them yeah, absolutely. I mean, I remember, I remember, Ken, sorry for interrupting, when I was producing one of Germany's biggest morning shows here, like we didn't do like back selling promos at all. We're just basically coming back to your teaser topic. We'll just basically, we never said like what you missed today. We'll basically already we're teasing the next morning with a big topic coming, trying to build this. And then obviously different times and different budgets involved with production people, but we try to build this mystique like for every morning that something mass is going to happen and like something that's going to basically interrupt and make people crazy, you know, like in the next morning. So we never played back clips from the show of the day. We always were basically going into the next morning already, you know. Now, I would I would play clips of the show. I'm just saying don't go on and say if you miss this show today. Yeah. It could be a clip from yesterday. It could be a clip Absolutely. from six, six weeks ago or six months ago you're just wanting to highlight what's really great about that show and then all i mean i'm sure that uh, that some of our viewers here today are familiar with what we call character clip promos yeah. and that would be a that's clip what we that did would, yeah. yeah that would characterize or typify exactly you know who that who that personality we're is. building images basically back in the days for like uh for the specific people like teasing in the next morning fantastic yes. Okay, so Randy, right before we get to the audience questions, and there's a whole bunch already showing up in the chat box. Okay. One last question for you. Um, who are some of your favorite talent and shows on the radio today, and why should we go listen to them? Some of my favorite shows today. That's a tough question. <laughs> <laughs> Be careful. Honest, you're going to offend somebody now. You know exactly. that. I know. Let's put that disclaimer out there. Yeah. If, I, if I leave somebody out... <laughs> Yeah, I'll write them uh, down, Randy. I'll have like pen and paper. It's like I'll write them yeah, down. So yeah, Randy uh, said. Uh, um, 
Well, I will admit one show that we brought up uh, earlier today, the Burt Show, uh, that's on uh, Q100 in Atlanta and syndicated in several markets, uh, is a show that I think is worth listening to. Um, what's good about that show is that they're very authentic. Uh, all of the characters uh, on that show are very revealing. They're very vulnerable about their personal lives and everything. And then they, co they uh, combine that with humor. In fact, uh, their, their slogan for the show is real period humor period. And so that's what you're getting out of that show. Um, another show that I would recommend uh, that's worth a listen, Preston and Steve. Uh, at M MMR in Philadelphia. Um, what's good about that rock show, it's an edgy show targeted to males. However, at the same time, it's never mean. It's edgy, but it's done in a way that is not offensive and, and it's still inclusive. And the other thing about that show is they have outstanding content. That they they really come up with a lot of uh, innovative ideas. And so Preston and Steve, I think, on the rock side is a good one. I'll mention one other show that's in a smaller market. It's an up-and-coming show. It's Kelly and Wood in uh, St. Cloud, Minnesota. And they're on, uh, I think it's Wild 99 Country, Wild 99 Country in St. Cloud. Uh, that show with execution, they do an outstanding job of setting up of getting out at the right time. Their teasing is outstanding. And they combine that with, uh, with some vulnerability and, and, uh, and character development as well on that show. So hopefully Thank I'm you. not in too much trouble here. No, I, I wrote all that down. I'm going to share that later with all the other okay. shows you did not mention. <laughs> all right. Yeah, your client roster just uh, collapsed. I know. I exactly. free, like, so. Hey, why didn't you mention me? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. So have a question for Randy. <laughs> Let's uh, put it in the chat box. Okay. First question comes from Paco Lopez. How far out should you tease? How far out should you tease? If you're talking about the drive times uh, in, morning, in morning or, or afternoon, uh, typically, you want to tease what's coming up next. Uh, we know that the time spent listening in drives, even on top radio stations, 10 or 12 minutes per listen. So you want to kind of keep it within that window. If there is something huge coming up on your show, uh, if you have a, uh, if you're going to interview Oprah or whatever that, you know, then then you can tease that you know, an hour or two out, but then teasing multiple times throughout the show. But typically you want to keep that in about a 10 minute window. So to sum it up, big topic, you can push that through the entire show, multiple teases, like regular topic, just next, bam, 10, exactly. 12 minutes, yeah. time, time spent listening. Uh, Raymond you know Parch, the, yeah. yep, sorry, Raymond Parch, the third question. <laughs> we like to have fun on our morning show and much that comes from personal lives which the listener seems to connect with but our show is also a sports show and there are times when it's difficult to find the balance how do you know when there may be too much personal show fodder when when you when you also have to discuss the big sports topics of the day so meaning the guy is in a tension field here randy you need to help him <laughs> well uh t toucher and rich is a is a show in uh, boston on a sports station uh, that I've had the, the privilege of working with those guys. And what they, what they do, which I think works, uh, and I'm seeing, we've worked with quite a few sports uh, shows as well. About 50% of your content should be about sports, and the other 50% is typically about male topics, about guy talk. And so I think if you... Now, that can be... That's going to change, uh, for example if the World Series or the Super Bowl or, you know, some big events are coming up, you're going to go a little more on the sports side. But I think uh, balancing that out about 50-50, maybe in some situation that could be 60% sports and 40% uh, uh, targeted to your target audience, which is typically males, not all males. But that's about, uh, that's about the balance of, that I would recommend. Okay. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Next question from KC. Randy, are personalities born or created? Mm, great question. <laughs> you know, 
so I think a, a few of them are born, but I'm going to go back to Malcolm Gladwell's book, Outliers, uh, and where he talked about all of these uh, uh, great performers, from starting with Mozart, going up to the Beatles and Bill Gates, Steve Jobs, all of these people, is that they put in the time. Uh, they they spend, uh, as he put it, approximately 10,000 hours, you know, developing their craft, honing their craft, improving, tweaking, working on it. And so I say that now there are some people that can put in 10,000 hours and really work on that. And <laughs> not I've, uh, you've probably seen that happen before. But uh, I, I think that that uh, talent can be developed. Uh, you know, I'll go back to. Uh, I don't want to get in trouble with Ryan, but when I first heard Ryan Secrets, I thought he sounded good, but I didn't think that he sounded like, wow, this guy is going to be, you know, the biggest star on the planet. I thought he was uh, eh, pretty average, but he was a very, very hard worker. I mean, the guy put in hours on every show. And as you know, he does multiple things. He's still doing that. So I think a lot of that gets into to really being serious about what you're doing. And putting in the time, uh, we are huge believers in prep and planning, and that's what creates spontaneity and the confidence uh, to go off script when you're when you're actually on the show too. So, Randy, let me ask you this. I think it's somewhat related, and I've had people ask me this recently. Um, you know, how long do we give a show before we? decide whether or not we feel it's working and we'll continue to invest. And let me add to that. My own point of view is with time spent listening to radio having decreased so much, I think that time frame is a lot longer than it probably used to be. What do you think? I think it is. Uh, if you're going to put on a new show and, and assuming that's a show that you believe in, you've got to give that show at least a year to a year and a half to, to develop. Uh, and especially if that's uh, in morning uh, in morning drive, because uh, that's the most routine time of day for all of us. And getting people to change their habits is not easy in the morning. And so because of all of the fragmentation and the competition in the audio space that we have today, you've got to give that show more time to develop. So, yeah, I mean, unfortunately, there there's a lot of uh, corporation that still have this uh, quarterly uh, mentality that hey, it's got to happen in a quarter, and that, you know what? That's just unrealistic. You After have, ten years of doing something different, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, it's about it's about establishing and nurturing yeah. a relationship with an audience, and that doesn't happen overnight. It takes time to earn the trust of an audience. Well said. Well said. I think that'd be a great. Go ahead. Can we take one more one more question? Okay. Sure. So, says Randy, single person morning show here. What are a few ways to get slow phones going these days on the morning show and still keeping the show PG rated? Mm, PG rated. Well, um, and by the way, if uh, uh, I think we have our, my email address in there somewhere, I'd be happy to pass along. There are 10 ways that we have come up with to get the phones to ring today because it's much more difficult to get people on the phone. People don't want to talk. They want to text and post and, and, and that sort of thing. So you have to work at it a lot harder today. And being a solo host is even more difficult. And as a solo host, you do want to interact a lot with people on the phone because it gives your show more dynamics and it's not just a monologue going through your whole show. So one thing that you can do is to randomly start putting people on the air. Hearing people on the air is what prompts other people to call. Also include the phone number in the imaging and making sure that you run that at least, uh, I would run it every half hour on a show like that in the morning. So, and that gives the signal to listeners that you are an interactive show that you want listeners to be on. You know, we've, uh, we've had shows uh, having success with apps like Nextdoor and uh, and just you know soliciting people that have interesting comments to go on, or uh, other things that you can do. Uh, for example, posting topics on social media uh, the day before, seeing what kind of comments that you're going to get, and then asking the the ones that are interesting to go on the air. Same thing with texting. If you have a if you have a text line, 
uh, you can get the number of that person. And so people that have interesting comments uh, to ask them to go on the air with you. So there's several different ways. And I know that, uh, well, let's say, let me mention another one. I know there's a couple of shows that have on their, on their site and on social media, you know, participate in the show. If you want to be in a contest, if you want to be in one of our interactive uh, games and features uh, on the air, register here they get their, their they get their information and then they call them so the you know you just really have to work it they, i would stage callers on the air too or people in the radio station friends or whatever it's just giving the people the idea that you're an interactive show that's what's going to get the phones to ring too well randy thank you so much for your time and joining us today great to have you um, and, and thank you, of course, for watching wherever you are. We appreciate you having here. Uh, and, and if you want to get a hold of Randy, I know it's on the screen, but it's Randy at RandyLane.com. And if you missed the video, want to watch it again, share it with any friends or colleagues, uh, the video will be available uh, by tomorrow at the P1 Media Group and Benstown websites. Uh, Randy Lane will have it as well. I imagine he might put a link out so you can see this, uh, this great knowledge again as well. Uh, normally, we end... The webinar by promoting the next one and there is going to be a next one and we've been working on a really really big guest for a year now who is finally that's going a teaser to do it. that's a teaser yeah, that's yeah, a teaser. teaser see that's teasing that's teasing finally going to do it uh and just waiting for the date next month that he is available to do it but you yeah. won't want to miss it it's going to be huge not that randy wasn't course. huge but uh yes um, now yeah. I feel like I'm putting him down like he put down the DJs that are exactly. so that, mentioned today. If you want to so, yeah. reach out to me, I'll <laughs> write the shows down. I wrote all the shows down. If you want to reach out to me, if you're a Randy, Randy's client and he has not named you, I wrote uh, the show down. Now, hey, Randy, it I? was fantastic. It was fantastic to thank, have you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much. Hey, I wanted and to mention we'll one more thing. I want to mention one more thing. Because in the teaser, thing, we, we said we were going to talk about the three universal principles. And I'll just quickly say that for all great shows, it gets down to killer content, flawless execution of that content, and high-definition characters, personality brands. Yeah, so if you didn't watch to the very, very end, you missed it. <laughs> killer content, exactly. flawless execution, HD characters, yeah. Randy. The, questions can, so the questions can, what do we, like, what do we basically incorporate? Like, we too, like, all, all these three principles. I think we did a good teasing, and maybe you're, like, a great executor so let's see we'll need HD, I, I don't know if it, randy probably can't help the characters there's not a lot no. of <laughs> yeah <laughs> he's gonna have a hard time yeah absolutely that's a tough, one. <laughs> that's a tough one a really tough one all right thank you so guys. much randy all thanks right. thank you bye, -bye. bye. bye. my privilege